Welcome to GovCast. I am your host, Managing Editor Amy Kluber. Connectivity and reliable, efficient communications are ever-present needs for everyone right now, including government. As technology and digital capabilities flourish, those needs become increasingly mandatory to successfully maintain workflows and meet the mission. At the Defense Department, especially the Navy and Air Force, improved connectivity means ensuring personnel in remote airfields can seamlessly transmit and access data for basic capabilities like monitoring or ordering parts, accessing technical manuals, and more. This is the flight line of the future. We're here with ID Technologies Director of DoD Air Force Programs, Jeff Penabianco and ComScope's Federal Sales Director, John McDonald, to talk about the work they are doing to modernize defense aviation. Jeff and John, thanks so much for joining us on GovCast. Great to have you. Great. Thanks for having us. Good afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, John, let's start with you. What do you do and what is your title and your organization? Yeah, so I'm the uh, federal sales director with ComScope. I manage a sales team responsible for our Department of Defense business. Jeff, how about you? I lead the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps team at ID Technologies. We have an incredible relationship with John and the ComScope team and have worked closely with them on numerous projects over the years. Our companies are very closely aligned from our executive leadership down to sales and marketing teams with a great synergy that allows us to be extremely effective working larger and very complex deals. Great. So what is the ID Technologies and ComScope partnership tackling? IDT and ComScope are working together specifically to solve the complex challenges of reliable communication for the DOD at Air Force and Navy bases, hangars, bunkers, and flight lines. As we all know, unreliable Wi-Fi and hangars and around flight line prevents our customers from successfully achieving their mission. This can be downloading technical documents for working on aircraft to accessing secure information from munition type environments. Again, we're working close to a dozen initiatives together on the flight line and hangar solutions with ComScope Technologies presently. Yeah, and I think what's interesting too about this solution in particular is that, you know, solving this kind of area in the military where, you know, unreliable communications has been kind of the standard, whether it's talking about in, in hangars, out on the flight line itself within munition bunkers. And if you if you look at an airfield or a flight line, you can see just how vast some of these things are. So typically traditional enterprise communications just don't do very well out there. And this is a really key critical area, you know, for the military to be able to accomplish their mission, especially when it comes to logistics and maintenance on aircraft. So we found that with our technology and the expertise that ID Tech could provide, it really was just a really good fit to help the Air Force in particular up front solve a major problem they've had for a long time. Now, when we say flight line of the future, to me, I immediately think of something like space. (laughs) So what exactly does that entail? Simply for me and I, the way that we've kind of, it's connectivity everywhere. And it's the idea of reliable communications across in this particular area. You know, the, the flight line of the future is airmen out working on aircraft. They're downloading technical publications off of their tablets or their devices. They're uploading data into a database seamlessly that records, you know, what kind of uh, parts they need to order for an aircraft, how much fuel they need. Instead of having to manually physically get out of a C-130, walk back into a hangar, hope to connect into a reliable access point for Wi-Fi communications and do all that. So it's really about saving time, saving money, and becoming much more efficient and effective in terms of how you know these guys can effectively accomplish their mission. I agree, John. Flight line of the future for us encompasses the entire communication ecosystem for the Air Force at large. This includes applications, databases, logistics, facilities, The intent has been to upgrade and streamline the communication ecosystem to give all airmen access to the information they need when they need it. As it pertains to networking and specifically wireless networking, it's part of the ecosystem that allows the rest to take place, right? You cannot launch a fighter without having a runway. You cannot access information without first having reliable communication infrastructure. What this entails is first understanding the customer's needs and then understanding the environment. With this understanding, we can then engineer the most efficient and effective communication infrastructure, you know, necessary to support the customer using the breadth of hardware options that ComScope provides. Talk through some of the current challenges right now with regard to connectivity and aviation. 
Yeah, if you look at airfields and airports, you know, they're typically in very large areas with minimal connectivity out to some of the most remote areas of these flight lines. And so these services, the military has tried to, you know, extend enterprise IT services like Wi-Fi out to these areas, but the coverage areas have just been very poor. And if you think about it, when the military designed some of these flight lines and some of these runways 20, 25 years ago, they weren't thinking about putting access points at certain points out, you know, in the remote areas running fiber underneath the uh, runway and to kind of go back and take care of that today would be very expensive and you got to shut down the flight line. So, you know, this is kind of one of these things where this has been a very poor connectivity out in these areas and they weren't designed this way to really support modern day communications. So that's one area. And if you think about kind of one of the other applications that we've kind of delved into with the Air Force, munitions bunkers. So if you think of these areas that are off in very isolated parts of a base, because this is where they're storing munitions and they want it, you know, away from the main part of the base. Well, it's also far away from traditional infrastructure. And there's also radio frequency concerns because, you know, a lot of times certain radio devices don't play very well with trigger mechanisms on munitions and things like that. So it's, you know, kind of these underserved areas, remote locations and traditionally just enterprise, traditional enterprise IT hasn't been able to kind of serve those folks very well. To add to that, from multiple conversations we've had with customers and industry, the primary challenge is how to effectively use wireless technology in and around large aircraft, right? So the aircraft creates a number of challenges in reflecting these radio frequencies. The second biggest challenge is how to effectively extend the base area network or band beyond the wired boundaries to aircraft parked, you know, could be a quarter mile away or more with the challenge of other aircraft being in the way as well. And finally, we need to accomplish, you know, the first two goals consistently in a manner that we can replicate from one base to another. Now, you guys are talking a lot about wireless communications. I, I've heard Wi-Fi. I've heard, you know, connectivity. In this age of mobility, how is that type of connectivity really affecting military aviation? So historically, I mean, Wi-Fi has been seen to be easy to deploy and use, right? We do it on our cell phones every day. You throw an access point on the wall and connect to it. What I think has been lost is the engineering of the wireless deployment, right? Recognizing how to best work within a facility, how to use its architecture and features to limit radio frequency contention. You know, the result is Wi-Fi networks that do not work well in the space it is deployed in. This is especially challenging in maintenance hangar environments where radio waves bounce and reflect off every other form of material around it. This is also where Comscope Ruckus differentiates itself from other manufacturers with its BeamFlex technology. Now, thinking about the Defense Department, how are they strategizing around these issues and working to increasingly modernize its capabilities? Uh, I'd say there's probably, I've got kind of five key areas, but, you know, one you hear about all the time is kind of the race to 5G. That's kind of a start, you know, with fifth generation LTE networks promising to deliver these much faster, denser LTE networks. So that's kind of one area. And the military has kicked off a number of trials throughout a number of different bases. I mean, this is a national security issue as well, because, you know, there's concerns, obviously, of the suppliers and who's going to be able to provide the radio technology for that, kind of the U.S. versus China, if you will, in that area. And if you you think about it with LTE now, there's a kind of a newer evolving technology called CBRS, which is citizen span radio service. And that's really a fourth generation radio technology, but it's effectively the way to extend private LTE networks out into the marketplace. So effectively taking previously unlicensed shared spectrum and offering it out to enterprise customers, in this case, the military, so that they can stand up their own private LTE network. It's not necessarily now reliant upon a carrier to deliver that service. And that's a concern for the military. Obviously, if you don't own the network, your data traversing it can cause problems. So I think CBRS offers a path to have you know, these LTE communications that they're used to, that most folks are used to with their cell phones. Another area that we've been investing heavily in and seeing a lot of customers adopting is distributed antenna systems. So think of this as a, a way to extend carrier grade LTE services inside buildings. And if you look at the military and government generally, you've got a lot of very old buildings that aren't very don't have very good coverage for LTE. So we've you know, designed the system to be able to extend this in here. And previously, carriers were the ones that would put their these DAD systems into these buildings. However, what we're starting to
starting to see now is folks within the military looking to stand up these carrier neutral multi-carrier signaling DAS platforms inside their buildings. And then lastly, really is Wi-Fi 6. And you hear about that. It's kind of, you think about it, almost the next generation of Wi-Fi 802.11ax, which again is you know offering the ability to increase throughput up to four times, decrease latency. And so it's everything's about getting faster, being kind of this ubiquitous coverage out there and multiple ways to deliver mobility services. Finally, I think one of the things that we've seen at Comscope is the military is now looking to modernize both kind of the fixed networks and the mobile networks. But one of the things that's probably one of the most important aspects of that entire process is ensuring that the physical infrastructure is able to actually support these much higher speeds and data rates as we transition from 10 gig to 40 to 100 to 400 gig services. If you've got bad fiber infrastructure in your buildings or on your base campus, camp post or station, you're gonna have issues delivering all those services I just talked about with those fancy networks. So it's kind of a, a multiple part where there's a lot of modernization going on, a lot of ways of extending our traditional networks into kind of these mobile areas. What we're presenting to the DOD and specifically the Air Force is a complete technology solution that creates the communication network to work inside the band or base area network, you know, extend that to the flight line and extend that to the munition depots out in the field. This is an engineered approach to maximize efficiencies for the in-building network and then use a combination of Wi-Fi and CBRS that John mentioned for the flight line and private LTE to extend well beyond the reach of, you know, a typical Wi-Fi solution. And only Comscope can offer the full breadth of products to create that solution. These efforts around mobility and, of course, 5G, we hear that so often now, how much impact that's going to have across the board around the nation, especially for rural areas, as you mentioned. I guess people don't really think about that as from an aviation perspective, but it makes sense. So talk through some of these benefits that improving connectivity and communications in general, how that will benefit defense specifically. As I suggested earlier, the communication network is the foundational basis for flight line of the future. Without a strong communication network foundation, the ability for airmen to access critical information in a timely manner is at risk. So a well-designed Comscope infrastructure can ensure a strong data communication foundation going forward. Yeah, I'd say even if you look at the personal aspect of it, you know, the military's op tempo has been through the roof for the last 20 years. And, you know, the last thing, you know, airmen want to be doing is feeling like they're trapped in, you know, 1990 with technology that doesn't work and that it's not ubiquitous. And it's really a return on their investment. If they can become more efficient in how they do their jobs, save their time so they spend more time with their family rather than marching back and forth between a hangar to try to upload data. I mean, it's really one of these things that it's reaping the benefit of what technology, the promise of technology you know, has always kind of been out there. And it's kind of making these, again, underserved areas and underserved soldiers and airmen out there being able to take advantage of the benefits of what this technology has to offer. Now, when we're talking about emerging technologies, obviously, we spoke in depth about 5G. But when we think about all the data needs that are going on and modernizing the infrastructure, how is emerging technology going to impact military operations most? I think one of the areas you know that really has a lot of promise is when you think about the Internet of Things. Tons of promise when you think of it from the wide array of things that can be used, whether it be security cameras, locks and alarms on doors, gunshot, triangulation and detection, sensors, all these different things. But one of the problems I think DOD struggled with, and many do, is that you know they just increase the threat surface when you take one of these IoT devices and you know, the, the military makes vendors go through pretty strenuous testing and certification for interoperability and security. And so that level of, you know, we're used to doing that, but a lot of these smaller vendors that are making these devices, they're not necessarily ready to be tested at that level, these devices. So putting those devices on a regular network has been a little bit of a challenge. One of the interesting thing, I think, with CBRS, that has the benefit that it has to deliver there is it's a completely separate network. It could be completely air-gapped from the traditional military unclassed and classified networks. And so it offers a really strong use case to stand up one, if not multiple private LT networks that interface with IoT devices for a number of applications on a military base. So I think it's really a technology that could kind of blow the doors open on IoT as one example. 
This technology is already making an impact in the solution set being presented to the flight line of the future by extending the band beyond where Wi-Fi can reach today. As John mentioned, the same technology is going to centralize management of the base facility operations to include things like door locks, lighting, security cameras, and other operations. As these technologies are adopted, they will allow for rapid deployment of secured facilities like what we've recently seen with the recent pandemic and then managed centrally for safety and security. Great. So one last question. What is next for your efforts with the Air Force? So we are working probably a dozen different requirements with the Air Force right now. Many of them are on the flight line and in the munitions depots. So unfortunately, with the pandemic, we haven't been able to get out and do the surveys and some of the stuff needed. But again, we've got multiple customers, specifically Air Force, that are ready to go. We just need to get back out there, do some site surveys. But they are thrilled with Comscope's technologies. And um, yeah, we're moving forward with that. Yeah, I would say it's interesting too. Yes, I've been involved in modernization of military networks probably for close to 20 years, about 18 years or so since I got out of the military. And what I'm seeing just from like what the Air Force is really trying to do, it's really becoming more of a holistic approach to how I modernize my infrastructure. It used to be, hey, I just modernized my physical copper and fiber plant out there. And then maybe I upgraded some switches and routers on the base, but then it became separate. Oh, we're going to roll out now kind of this separate Wi-Fi network. And now we're starting to see really the military looking to take full advantage, I think, of the wide array and spectrum of what's out there. And that's really, it's encouraging because I think, you know, a lot of times you get into your own little box and you engineer in a, in a sort of a small kind of footprint and looking at things in one way that maybe you've always traditionally done it. But really, I've seen from what the military is really looking to do is take advantage of what industry has to offer and, you know, solutions that ID Tech's put together with our technology and us working together to deliver that. I mean, you know, we're really looking forward to seeing, you know, how we can impact uh, the mission and helping, you know, the various branches of service accomplish our mission with our technology and our services. Well, thanks so much for talking about Flightline of the Future. I'm looking forward to seeing what that entails as far as the connectivity aspect. So thanks so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. GovCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentcio.com slash podcasts. If you liked what you hear, let us know by leaving us a review in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. GovCast is produced by Amy Kluber. Theme music provided by Big Hoax. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com. Sponsor at